Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to The Christian and the Culture, a program designed to help you, the believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, confront the culture in which we live. Now, I know there are many pressures that are coming at you, and there are many satanic tricks and traps being unveiled before you even today. But we are here to tell you, you do have victory in Christ Jesus. So roll your shoulders back, lift up your head, open your mouth and rejoice for victory is yours. So we welcome you to this broadcast. We want you to encourage yourself and realize that in all things, you are more than conquerors. Joining me here today are my two outstanding co-hosts, Pastor Brian Weatherspoon of Tabernacle Harvest Church. Pastor, how's the Lord treating you now? The Lord is treating me well, Bishop, and uh, thank you for asking. Christian and Culture family, God bless you. We are absolutely ready to jump into this topic. You know what I'm going to tell you. Move the coffee table. Let's get ready to get into this word today. And, of course, joining us is our soon-to-be theologian, <laughs> Pastor Tim Baldwin of Bethel Deliverance Northeast. Pastor, now you have to tell us, when are you graduating and completing your, your course? I am, I am scheduled to graduate in this June, June 3rd. All yeah, right, we yes. rejoice with you. Yes, it's I'm, been a I'm long excited. road, hasn't oh, it? Yeah. A long road. It has been, yeah. And yeah. how is the Lord treating Bethel Northeast? He is treating Bethel Northeast well. He is, <clears throat> he is a good God. Amen. Yeah. Yep. Amen. That's good. Well, today we realize that there are many things coming at you. And here's something that we've discovered is really on the minds of the believer in the 21st century. What does God want from you? Mm. You hear so many different sermons about purpose, destiny, all of these things. And I believe, like me, so many people are confused. You come down to the reality that I don't know what God really wants from me. So I try to fill that void yeah. by doing so much in church. And I wind up, unfortunately, becoming like a member of the church of Ephesus, doing a lot of work, but really not loving God. So today we'd like to take this broadcast to help you understand just what it is God really wants from us. And maybe this will help you gain a better perspective on your true purpose for being here in this world. Mm. In Mark's gospel, Jesus is confronted by some translations call him a scribe, others call him a lawyer, whatever you want to call him. He brings a very relevant question to Jesus. He says, what is the greatest commandment of all? What's the basis for that question, gentlemen? Mm. Uh, well, the basis is they're trying to catch Jesus in, in error <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of the commandments, okay. in, in terms of the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. And Jesus really, I mean, when Jesus gets on the scene, period, he just turns the whole establishment, the whole culture yeah. upside down. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they ask, they ask him, what's, what's the greatest of the commandments? And he says, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength, mind, and soul. Okay. And you should love your neighbor as yourself. But mm -hmm. is it a relevant question? I mean, the guy asks the question, and when you think about it, let's just mm -hmm. go with the, with the text from the King James that calls him a scribe. Yes. And we know the duty of the scribe was to listen to the rabbi to see if there's going to be any false doctrine right. or anything. He's writing down everything. Absolutely. So he comes to this point where he asks Jesus, what's, what's important? What should yeah. we really focus on? Yeah. Is that a legitimate question <laughs> even for today? It is a legitimate question uh, because uh, I think the quest in pleasing God, this is what everybody wants to know. How do I please God? Yeah. What does he really want from me? Is it the commandments? Is it the, do I have to do these things? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I love the way Jesus brings it into, it's not the things I want. I, I want you to work on the love issue. Love is a part of the kingdom. Uh, you know, things, working materials, not necessarily kingdom. Love is a kingdom principle. You have that down packed. Everything else kind of works around that love factor. So if you get the loving right, yourself, your neighbor, you know, giving God all your strength, it will then kind of permeate into other people's lives and kind of come out of you and just bless everybody else. Well, how many times do we preach and teach and we deal with non-essentials <laughs> that can create that question sure. in the minds of our parishioners. Sure. How do we avoid that, uh, setting the people up for that question? Yeah. 
how do we avoid setting them up for the question, what, yes. do, what does God want? Yes. Oh, well, I mean, you, you said it, not preaching non-essentials, because yeah. that, that is an essential. Preaching and teaching what is essential in terms of what God wants from us. You know, um, yeah, I, I love that text and that whole scene, because uh, when they're asking Jesus, Jesus, he actually, he actually goes back to the Old Testament. He does. And he pulls from that, that uh, the prayer, the Shema mm -hmm. in Deuteronomy 6. But he adds, he actually rewrites that mm -hmm. because, because, because uh, in, in Deuteronomy, the Lord says heart, soul, strength. Mm -hmm. Jesus says mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He adds a fourth component yes. there. Mm -hmm. and, and so again, he's saying, <clears throat> love the Lord with your entire being. That's right. Mm -hmm. And love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. That's easy to say. I mean, how do you do that? Uh, 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 uh. I mean, look, let, let's be journey. realist. Yes. Yeah, that's the yeah, journey. That's the I rub. mean, let, let, yeah. let's, let's yeah. look at it from the, the, the side that our audience is looking. How, what have we ever loved to that degree? Mm -hmm. And what models that type of love to us to use as a reference point with God? Mm -hmm. You know, Bishop, the only real model is Christ. That's the only real model. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm sure that everybody who's watching us on some level has, have had some type of love for something that they right. felt like they just could not, you know, get rid of yeah. or could not do without. But the, but the real testament is when we look at the life of Christ yeah. and how Christ gave himself selfless, obedient, humility, all of those things, all of the attributes that we see of Christ, I think he's the only real model yeah. in terms of what real love is mm -hmm. and what that looks like. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, you know, we, we kind of talked about it before, but a mother's love is kind of the closest example. Yeah, she can, good, she can see a child even though they may not be the best to the mom, he is or she is the best. And I think that kind of love kind of is exemplary of what it may mirror, but it is not the whole. Yeah. Right. Uh, the journey will be, um, you know, to kind of quest for that that ability to love God with all your heart, and um, and I don't know if we quite will get it without certain things. Y'all always get on me when I talk about you know <laughs> persecution and, and and trials and you know those things kind of draw the heart closer. Yeah. You know, the more blessed we become, the more we seem to kind of grow apart from that. But it's when it's in those tougher times that you realize that how much you love him and how much he loves you. So we, we might have to go through some things to get there. That's that's all I'm trying to say is <laughs> we're not going to fool with you today. Uh, but Pastor Tim makes a great point. He yeah. says Jesus adds that fourth dimension of mind, which to me is the, the totality of love. He, he seems to skip over the emotional display. Mm. Because I, I think this man was hungry for reality. He's saying, look, I see all this, I hear all this teaching, many other rabbis have come through. Yeah. What does God really want? Yeah. You know, he's seeing all of the praise and the worship mm -hmm. and all. He says, but there's gotta be more. And mm -hmm. Jesus says, as you say, he says, all right, you love him with the heart, you love him with the soul, with all your strength. But when he throws that mind in there, yeah. what's he really saying when he says, love God with your mind? Yeah, I, I think the mind, that piece adds like the intellectual piece from this perspective that I have a choice mm. that I, I can think about, think through. And you said it a, a few seconds ago where he really, really glosses over that emotional piece mm -hmm. because we've seen emotional love. Yes. Yes. Emotional love says that, okay, I'm on today, I'm <laughs> yes. off tomorrow. Yes. But love that is calculated and thought through says, even though it's not the best situation today, I can still move forward and, and do love and be love and, and, and exhibit love. And so that mind piece for me says that it, that it causes me to be all in on a different level. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, I'm going to kind of advocate for, for both here. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lobby for both because I don't think there's anything you do without emotion. Everything you do has an emotion attached mm -hmm. to it. How you express that emotion may be a different animal. But everything, even when you contemplate, there's an emotion beyond mm -hmm. the contemplation. So there's no way you're doing things without any kind of emotion. So I don't think he's saying remove emotion, mm -hmm. right? I, I think there's a time for maybe like, as Bishop said, the, the worship, the praise part, but it's also time to contemplate. But even in contemplation, there's an emotion that's brought forth out of, you know, thinking on what was said and, you know, believing on what was said, all of that enact some kind of emotion from the, from the person following, uh, even if it's a sad emotion, right? Even if it's a con contrite kind of emotion, you know, I feel bad about what I've did. That's an emotion. So emotion, we're, we're emotional beings 
who express it maybe differently, but even in contemplation, that brings about some kind of emotion into your, into your being. And uh, I think he's saying, don't ignore that, know how to harness that. Hmm. Yeah, Pastor Brian's a troublemaker. And he, and yeah, he's, I, I, he always does this. I right? say, you know, he always, he's got. He, they forget that I'm a forensic yeah. psychologist, and I'm listening to him espouse the theory that that everything we do has an emotional connection. To us. I, I I don't disagree. Yeah, yeah. But I think that there are times we become oppressed by the lack of disciplining that. Okay. So hence we have the mind part. To mm -hmm. me. To me, Jesus is saying, look, when you don't feel like it, right. love him anyway. And right. when you don't feel yeah. like it, love my brother or my sister, Amen. regardless of what they've done to yeah. me. Sure, sure. Now, when you look at this story, I'm like Pastor Tim. I, I, I like this story yeah. because of its succinctness. Yes. I mean, this guy is confronted by over 600 laws, mm -hmm. and it's rational to say, yes. which one does God want right, me to keep? Right. Now, we do right. the same thing. Right. I right. mean, we right. get up, we have our, our particular sins that we preach against, right. but right. then we don't, like, you hear a lot of sermons against for, uh, adultery, fornication, <laughs> yeah. homosexuality, but you don't hear anything about gluttony. <laughs> right. You don't hear anything about the 25th right. pair of shoes. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, the, so the people today are in the same position as yeah. this gentleman. All right, what does God really want from yeah. me? And brothers, we're hard pressed to identify a specific uh, avenue, if you will, yeah. that, that would please God yeah. with the forbiddens. I call them the forbiddens, sure. things I'm not supposed sure. to do. Absolutely. Because one leads to another. Right. You know, when I was coming up in Christianity, we couldn't go to the movies at all. <laughs> That's right. right. Yeah. We <laughs> never had uh, the church used for anything other than preaching and concerts. Yeah. There were no other shows. There yeah. was nothing else nothing being else. done because yeah. we, we believed when Jesus threw the money changers out, yes. that represented everything. Yes. But now we've evolved into the building is no longer as sacred as mm -hmm. it used to be. Right. So now we do a lot of other things. And I'm not saying it's sin. Sure, it's just yeah. that we've removed some of those bugaboos. Sure. So now this man is doing the same thing we're doing. Yeah. You know, we're saying, okay, God, you told me as a young Christian, don't go to the movies. Now yeah. you make movies that lift up Christ. Yeah. So what do I do? So the issue was never the movie. Right. 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 The, the issue is still, it comes back to your heart. Yes. Right. And, and I like this word, uh, cardia, for the heart, right? The, the issues of life flow through that heart. The heart is a valve that the, the, the issues flow through. If my heart is right, then I'll start to govern, right, how I interact. My emotional status kind of is governed by what's going on in the heart. So... Uh, and maybe Jesus is pointing to the fact that if all your concentration's on me, if your thoughts are on me, if your actions are towards me, then you will almost encompass the law. The, the, these 613 laws won't be able to hold you right. because they're not the thing. The thing is, can I have your heart? If I was to tell any the believer today, give him your heart. Stop worrying about the practices yeah. and give him your heart. If he can get your heart, he can get you to... Uh, to comply, if you will, to the things that he wants you to but do. But are we teaching an impossibility, gentlemen? Uh, you mm, know, I don't think we're teaching question. an impossibility. You know, obviously what has to be done has to be done in, in, in accordance with the Lord. Um, I, I yeah. think that we would be teaching an impossibility if we're t talking about perfection. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when we ask that question, because I'm thinking as we're talking, uh, to love the mm -hmm. Lord with everything in you, love your neighbor as yourself, the, the, one of the things that came to my mind while you were talking was that we should have a deep devotion toward God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in that deep devotion toward God, I think everything else flows out of that. My lifestyle, my, as Pastor Brian said, my actions mm -hmm. flow out of that. You know, it's, it's, it's even funny that, or ironic that, that we, we know that we're saved by grace through faith, not by works, right? We know that, Ephesians uh, 2, 8, 9, right? But when you look at judgment, in the Bible, I'm almost sure every text in the New Testament talks about judgment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't judge doctrine. Right. It doesn't judge, right. you know, anything else. Yeah. It judges our actions. Right. Motives. Our deeds. Yes, right. Yes, yes. And so I think out of, out of having a deep devotion for God, it allows us 
to for our actions to be in line Absolutely. with who God is. Absolutely. God has a lot of competition for us. He does. <laughs> I mean, it's a good point. <laughs> and he created his own issue. He created his own problems. He really did. He created his Can own problems. Let's face that for us, Bishop? it. All three of us are fathers. <laughs> yes. All three of us have children. Yeah. Okay. Have we ever given our children as they were developing? Did we ever give them the freedom of choice to choose wrong? without our intervention. No. God will sit right there and let you make a bad choice and go through the consequences of it, knowing that it may pull you away from loving him yeah. because he sees 20 years from now, you're yeah. going to be more effective. Yes. Right. But does it ultimately pull you away from him? Or does it ultimately strengthen? Now you're Calvinistic. <laughs> does it pull you away? I would say yes. Okay. But I don't think the pulling away is permanent. Mm -hmm. Right. This man's right. question really is our question. Yeah. What does it take to please God? Yeah. And even after all this time, brothers, I'm hard pressed to come up with a clear definition. I, I don't think there's a cookie cut for everyone. Okay. I think for everyone, there's a, there's a distinct road you've got to travel. Same Lord, but same Christ, same But we have an audience spirit. that comes from many different walks of true, life, and they true. need some capsulization. I just had this conversation with a young man last night. We're doing a teaching in our church on the book of Colossians. And in Colossians, you discover there's a heresy amongst the Colossian church. One part of that heresy is asceticism, mm -hmm. where, you know, the teaching is you've got to do some extreme things. Mm -hmm. Uh, in order to please God, mm -hmm. right? And, and, you know, excessive fasting, excessive giving up, taking away this, almost become like John the Baptist, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but the, the, the New Testament doesn't really give you that idea that you should have to be so um, ascetic in your behavior to please God. It comes back to the issues of the heart. It comes back to how, how much of you can I have? And we have to then ask ourselves the question, how much of me do I want to give? And, and when, when that question can meet a convergence, then at some point we get to a place to say, at least I'm here and I can please God. Maybe I'll grow some more with that, with trial, with test, with life, with experience, I'll grow even more. But what we can't do is try to put the thing you have to do in order to make them happy because it's not the same for everybody. So, so I understand what Pastor Brian is saying, yeah. but isn't there a, a universal truth to, again, the scripture in terms of loving the Lord with all your heart, with all your strength, all your mind? Okay. Because if we say it's different for everybody, then doesn't that make it, it's almost like, um, it's almost like, like everybody has their own version of. Yeah. Well, well, not it's what caused this guy to ask the question. Right. <laughs> yeah, not, but not. We're not talking about sin. There's a universality. No, no, with you're talking about connection with God. But we're talking about personal issues of the heart that draw you closer. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And for me, what I may struggle with is different from what you struggle. Okay, with. Okay, I get sure. that. Right? Yeah, I get that. I think sure. that's, that's the the point that I'm saying is there are different rules and what God may require of me in this season of my life. It's not the same as what he's requiring from you. But it all leads down that road to loving God. It all leads down to loving God. It, it's supposed to. <laughs> it's supposed to. If, if these thoughts, and, and once again, we're talking from the premise of I'm giving him my heart. If it's me giving him my heart and giving of myself, then Lord willing, that the only place it's drawing you to is closer to him. But I can't, I can't give God my heart the way you can because I don't see him the same way. Well, yeah. I see him... Because of my socialization, right. my father was a strict disciplinarian, not abusive, right. just strict. strict. Sure. And there were certain things that my brother and I had to do being men, sure. contrary to our sister. Sure. Yeah. So Understood. my view of God was framed that way. Gotcha. So someone may think that I'm a legalist, yeah. but I would say that's how I came up. Right. So that's how I see father. Sure. I see father that way. Sure. Is God looking for that? I don't think so. Right. Right. But that's what works for me. Yeah. It's unfair of me to take that discipline and put it on everyone else yeah. because they may have had a different type of father. Right. I, I agree. I think we're saying the same thing. Yes, we are. Because, yeah. We're not we're not trying to tell you right. this. Only one way that you personally right. 
please right. God. Right. Other than we can say universally, right. we know the sins we don't commit. Right. We, we're yeah. not even talking about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're talking about getting closer to him. Yeah. And getting closer to him is a journey for everybody. But what was good about Jesus' answer, he didn't even talk about sin. He never came he to did. sin. He said, love God and love your fellow man. And that that's what's going to make God happy. That encapsulates right. the whole thing. But that, but that does encapsulate, yeah. encapsulate not sinning. Right. Yeah. Because that, that whole, those two Amen. verses yes. point back yes. to yes. Exodus. Yes. Yes, it does. And, and the, right and the to yes, Ten Commandments. It yes, yeah. it does. Because if I love God, then I will only do those things that please him. Absolutely. And if I love you, then I won't steal from you. I, I won't covet you. what right. you have. Absolutely. So right. he's really saying the thing that God yeah. wants you to do is love him and then love everybody love else everybody that you else. come in contact with. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. Which really is a lifelong yeah. struggle. Yeah. Yeah. It is a lifelong struggle because people are messy, <laughs> right? Pe people are complicated. They can be messy. And, and you have to learn how to negotiate all of those nuances with people. Yeah. And every one person is different. So he's really looking for us to love God. Yes. And for us to love people Amen. as we love God. As we love God. Which is... Mm. The whole. <laughs> it's, the whole it's, of the law difficult. is that. It's difficult. And it is difficult. I, I, think, difficult. I think, as you said earlier... The things that God exposes us to on the negative yeah. are designed to purge and purify us, Absolutely. to make us better receptacles yes, sir. of who he is. Yes. We used to have a phrase in, in my early Christendom, let God love them through you. Yeah. Later on, maturity teaches that's not what he does. He loves right. us and then yeah. we love so you extend right. it. based Absolutely. on how we receive Absolutely. from him. And so this guy comes to Jesus. I love this. He comes to Jesus and he says, look, I just want to know what's important to God. Tell me what to do. And so do we. Yeah. We want to know what's important to God. Yes, we do. And I know many of you are sitting there right now. You're watching this broadcast and you're asking that question, what is important to God? Is it reading five chapters a day? Right. Is it trying to read through the Bible every year, which right. has become a novelty? Because some people just read through it and have Absolutely no understanding correct. of it. <laughs> you know, is it going to church for every service and singing and being a part of every choir and auxiliary? And yet we've been told that if we're children of God, these are the things God requires of us. And yet our Lord Jesus says, you know what God really wants from you? Mm. He wants you to love him. Now here, brothers and sisters, is where we have our greatest deficit because there's no instruction book. You think he would have put in the Bible someplace in one of those 66 books, here's how you love me. Yeah. Later on, when Jesus was confronted by that, that question, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. There it is, that simple. If you love me, keep my commandments. And what that means is if you love God, you have to love me, you have to love Pastor Brian, and you have to love Pastor Tim. Amen. Because John says you cannot love God without loving us. Mm -hmm. Even if we do things that are contrary, mm -hmm. you must still love us if you love God. So we pray that you will embrace this teaching today and no longer struggle with what's important to God. Mm -hmm. For Jesus gives us a very clear answer, that you love him with all your heart, mm -hmm. Love him with all your soul. Love him with all your strength. And as Pastor Tim said, Jesus adds that fourth dimension. Love him with the mind. Think it through. When you decided to follow Jesus, when you came to that ultimate decision, that I'm going to give my life to the Lord Jesus, what were you saying? That I want him to be Lord of my existence. And I'm going to follow him from a rational perspective, which means I'm going to think about this. What does it cost to follow Jesus? Very simply, you. That's it. It costs you. It costs us. Everything we are, not what we have, yeah. because what we have will be burned up or, you know, it can be stolen. It can decay. But it's everything that we are. He has to take my temperament. He has to take everything about me. And guess what? He wants that. Mm -hmm. He loves Eric. And Eric is working on loving him. Thanks for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to sit with you and have you evaluate this passage out of Mark's gospel. The man says, what's more important to God? And Jesus says, just love him with all that you are and think about who he is to you. We can't guarantee you'll have an existence without trouble. But we can guarantee the Lord will be with you during times of trouble. So love him today.
People will walk away. But Jesus said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. It's been a privilege and an honor to bring you the Christian and the culture. And as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, stand. And having done all to stand, keep on standing. God bless you richly. We'll see you real soon. The Christian and the Culture is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different. The trials of life can be overwhelming when you try to face them in the natural. Many of these battles are spiritual, so they require spiritual weapons to achieve victory. Bishop Lambert has a profound message to all Christians. Those who engage in spiritual warfare can and will win. Real Christians are people who engage in spiritual warfare and win. It's not enough just to talk about spiritual warfare. You must also talk about the fact that you win. When you put on the whole armor of God, you'll be able to abide in God and stand against the devil. You might bend, but you won't break. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You have the ability to destroy the headquarters. You don't fight the skirmishers. You destroy the headquarters. Get equipped to win the battles of life by utilizing spiritual weapons. The Real Christian Life Spiritual Warfare Series is available with your donation of $25 visit ericlambertministries.org or call 1-800-550-3284 to receive your copy today. The Bethel Deliverance app is now available to download for free at Apple Store and Google Play. You can tune into Sunday services through live stream, view video sermons on demand, listen to audio messages through podcasts, send prayer requests, communicate through social media, and you can contribute to the ministry simply by using today's technology. Get access to all of Bethel's media outlets and church events right at your fingertips. Go to the Apple Store or Google Play and download Bethel Deliverance to get connected today. Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Lambert. I want to welcome you to the Eric Lambert Ministries website. On this website, you will be able to get information about books, CDs, DVDs, and even the printed word designed to help you in your walk with Christ. You'll find information about our YouTube channel and the services that we have at Bethel Deliverance International Church. And we want you to understand that our ministry is designed to lift up Jesus, to glorify his name, and to get you, the listener, connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. I am excited about the Eric Lambert Ministries website, and I want you to join us as often as you can, and we guarantee two things. You'll have a closer walk with Jesus. Number two, your life will be richer. God bless you. Access resources that will enrich your Christian walk today by visiting ericlambertministries.org. That's ericlambertministries.org. The Christian and the Culture is a production of Bethel Deliverance International Church. Thank you for watching. Be blessed.